directed by Roman Polanski, is the type of film that is made to be discussed. It's excellent, not because of good acting or an interesting plot, but because it is often ambiguous, a trait in films that I'm almost always attracted to. The main characters here are Rosemary, played by Mia Farrow, and her husband Guy, played by John Casvetis. They move into a new apartment in New York City and before long become friends with their upstairs neighbors, an older couple who were somewhat eccentric. The event that pulls them together is actually a suicide. A young girl who had been staying with the neighbors jumps out the window to her death, and during the investigation they come to know each other and become friends despite the fact that there's a huge age difference between the two couples. Rosemary and Guy decide to have a baby, and their new friends are the first to hear about it, but the events surrounding the conception are strange. On the day they plan to start trying to get pregnant, the older couple brings them a dessert that Rosemary thinks has a strange undertaste. Later, she passes out, and she has a dream, or at least what appears to be a dream, where she is raped by a demon, while cultists, including her neighbors, look on. In the morning, she finds scratches on her body. But Guy claims that he had sex with her sleeping body because he really wanted to have a baby and he didn't want the night to go to waste, and that the scratches were just his nails needing cutting. Her pregnancy is difficult. She's referred by her neighbors to a doctor who is quite unusual and unorthodox in his methods. He even tells her not to listen to any of her friends or read any books on pregnancy and to only trust him. Rosemary is plagued by constant pain and is troubled by a strange good luck charm with an odd smell that the neighbors gave her. Eventually, she becomes sure that her neighbors are cultists and that they've seduced her husband into black magic. She's sure that his sudden newfound success in acting is due to their black magic and that the cultists were promised her baby in return. The question that is on the mind of the viewer is, is it true? Was Rosemary raped by a demon or Satan himself, or was it a dream that she had from too much to drink? Are her neighbors sinister Satanists, or are they just weird? Is her increasingly paranoid and frantic behavior due to everyone around her being corrupted by a cult, or is she suffering from prepartum hysteria? It's not until the very end that you'll find out. The film strings you along with the idea that either interpretation is valid. Rosemary comes off as more troubled as you go through the film, but evidence, albeit circumstantial evidence, keep piling up that the neighbors are definitely agents of Satan. You will, of course, find out, and I'll leave that for you to check out. As for my opinion, I think this is a great one. Like The Devil Rides Out, it has a very slow, deliberate pace that is light on plot and heavy on dialogue and characterization. But this one is far more interesting, in my opinion, because instead of showing you good and evil characters and a battle between black forces and white forces, instead we get the villains, if they even are villains, operating as you would expect cultists to operate, behind the scenes and in the shadows. By the time that Rosemary is able to tell her suspicions to an outside party, well, if you put yourself in that character's shoes, she just sounds like she's nuts, with wild flights of fancy, and she's deeply paranoid. This is a really good film, but... More on the disturbing side of horror, in this case there's very little in the way of special effects or frightening scenes, but instead Polanski went for unease and doubt, which I personally find effective. The biggest criticism against this one that I've heard is that it's not scary, but well, that's all well and good, it isn't scary, but it does deliver on being thrilling. You know, one of the most famous horror actors ever was Boris Karloff, and he was against calling them horror films at all. He preferred the term thriller. And in this case, it's apt. The film doesn't set out to horrify you, but it does give thrills by making you question the entire premise. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10.